let's take a look at a quantity known as Young's modulus and a couple of related quantities known as stress and strain. So this Young's modulus is a measure of how stiff a material is. So if a material with a very high Young modulus will be very stiff, you'll need a lot of force to stretch it or compress it. Um, whereas a material with a very low Young modulus uh, will be very easy to stretch, it won't require as much force. Um, so examples of high Young modulus materials would be metals, low Young modulus would be things like plastics. So let's have a look at the related quantities because it's though when we combine this stress and strain that we're able to work out a Young modulus. So a stress in a material is a force per perpendicular cross-sectional area. So we can see here, if we've got a sample of a material and we apply a force, this material has a cross-sectional area. And to work out the stress that this material experiences, we do a force divided by that area. So the force we're applying to the material divided by this cross-sectional area. The strain is the extension when we're talking about tensile strain or compression when we're talking about compressive strain per unit original length. So we take some material that starts off with some length L, we stretch it out a little bit so we apply our force and it will increase its length by some extension. And to work out the strain we do this change in length or this extension divided by the original length. So you can see this stress and this strain, so the stress and the strain, uh, they're looking at how much force is there compared to the size of the object and how much extension is there compared to the size of the object. So we're taking into account the size, the shape, the width, the length of the object in working out this stress and strain. And so that means when we combine these two to get the Young modulus, the Young modulus is the same for any shape of the same material. So the Young modulus will be different for different materials, but for any given material, if we were to measure the Young modulus, it will be the same regardless of the size or shape of the sample. Uh, if we have a thicker sample, for example, it would have a larger cross-sectional area, and so we'd need to apply a greater force to get the same stress. If we've got a long sample, then the same force gives us a greater extension. So that's taken into account by looking at the proportional change in length instead of the absolute. So how do we combine them? Like so. So this E is used to represent Young modulus. Sigma was our stress. Epsilon was our strain. And the Young modulus is simply the ratio of the stress divided by the strain. And if we wanted to substitute in the values, that gives us force per area over change in length per length, which works out as force times uh, length over area times uh, change in length. So let's have a look at a quick calculation um, just to example how this might all fit together. So let's say we've got some sample of material and it's cylindrical in shape. Uh, so a wire for example and let's say that the diameter of this wire is 2 millimeters. The length of the wire, let's take as 1.5 meters. And this wire, uh, being a wire, let's say it's a metal, typical values of Young modulus for a metal uh, might be somewhere in the region of 100 gigapascals. So pascals is the unit of pressure is what we use to measure Young modulus because stress was a force per area which is a pressure uh, equivalent so we use pascals to measure this whereas our strain is a length over a length so it is unitless and so when we work out Young modulus by doing stress over strain we've got pascals over no units so we're just left with pascals. Uh, but it does tend to be in the region of gigapascals. So metal is about 100 gigapascals, plastics in the region of a few gigapascals. Um, anyway, so let's take this value of Young modulus and uh, let's 
say we want to find out the force required to extend this wire by 5 millimeters. Okay. So we know our Young modulus is our stress over our strain. We know our stress is our force per area. And we know our strain is our change in length over our original length. So if we want to know the force required to cause this extension, then we need to find the stress. So the force will be given by the stress times by the area. To get the stress, we're going to need to look at the Young modulus and the strain. The strain we're going to do by the change in length over the original length. So the stress is going to be the Young modulus times by the strain. Our strain is going to be our change in length, so our 5 millimeters over 1.5 meters. That's going to be 0 0.005 meters over 1.5 meters. And that gives us 3.3 .3 times 10 to the minus 3 as the value we get there. So now we're going to take this and we're going to put it back in here and now times it by our value for Young's modulus. So we're going to times uh, so we're going to have 3.3 .3 times 10 to the minus 3 times by 100 giga, so times 10 to the 9. And that's going to come out as 3.3 .3 times 10. It's going to be nice and simple. 100 times 10 to the 9 gives us 10 to the 11. We're going to take 3 back off of that, and so this will give us 3.3 .3 times 10 to the 8 and that will be in pascals, so our stress is in pascals. Now we've got our stress, so we can work out our force by timesing it by our area. So our force is given by our stress times our area, so now we just need to work out the cross-sectional area times this stress by that value, and we'll have the force required to give us this extension. Uh, so we know the diameter is 2 millimeters. That gives us a radius of 1 millimeter, uh, which is 10 to the minus 3 meters. And we know area, the cross-sectional area of the circle, is given by pi r squared. And so in this case, pi times uh, 1 millimeter squared is give, give, going to give us pi times 10 to the minus 6, which is going to be about 3.1. 10 to the minus 6. So now we can take this value, multiply it by this value. So we're going to have 3.3 .3 times 10 to the 8 times by pi times 10 to the minus 6. Now pi times 3.3 .3 comes out as about 10, and 10 to the 8 times 10 to the minus 6 will give us about 10. times 10 gives us a thousand newtons. So a thousand newtons applied on this two millimeter diameter wire would give us an extension of five millimeters as long as it didn't break. To work out if it breaks, we need to look at ultimate tensile stress, but that we might have a look at another time. So here's a nice example of how we can take these quantities, this stress, the strain, combine them to get young modulus, and so here we've got a couple of equations we can manipulate in all sorts of ways to find out any one of any number of quantities. So we could find out a young modulus if we were given a force and area, a change in length and the length, or just the stress and the strain. Alternatively, we can find a force applied, an area, a change in length, an original length, stress, and strain. So all sorts of things we can work out with a little bit of algebraic manipulation.